Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I have the biggest honor today. Mr. O'Connell, the Barkerville blacksmith, has invited me into the blacksmith shop and is going to make me a crevicing tool today. Actual mining tool from an actual gold rush town, from an actual gold rush blacksmith. This will be awesome. So wish us luck and I hope you enjoy. Mr. O'Connell found a Barkerville artifact, something laying around the blacksmith shop that he's gonna use to make this crevicing tool for me. How exciting. Got some history to my tools now. We are heating up my artifact here to cut off the nuts off either end because those nuts have been on there for a hundred years and are not going to be twisting off. So we're going to cut off the two nuts and then we're going to start forming it into the crevicing tool. So if you don't already know, a crevicing tool is a tool that a plaster miner uses to get down into cracks in bedrock and drag the material out. Gold likes to find the lowest possible spot to sit and in bedrock it's going to be in those cracks. The gold's going to work its way into the cracks, go all the way down to the bottom and a miner needs some way to pull that gold out of the crack so they can put it in their pan and pan it out. And this crevicing tool is the perfect tool for doing such a task. And it has to go back in the fire to reheat because you don't want to continue working a piece of metal once it's cooled off. Otherwise it gets brittle and can actually crack. So exactly. we back in the heat every few minutes to keep it nice and malleable. We want to keep it like it'll go back in the fire at about, well you can see on the chart over here, maybe 1300 degrees or so once it starts to get down to red. All right, back to the anvil. Now, how's this looking so far? I love it. I would like and mine we'll curved. Yeah, I think that's hooked around so you can actually grab around. the gold and pull it out. Yeah. But yes, that look, that's looking great. And for those of you out there that are probably saying to yourselves right now, why is he choking up on the hammer that way? Well, it is important for a blacksmith to control how hard they are hitting. And uh, it's not like a carpenter's hammer where they want to get as much force as possible. He doesn't want a big swing. He wants to be able to control it. So uh, experienced blacksmith is definitely going to know how to swing and how much force to put on it and where to hold the handle to do such. And that is looking great. That is a perfect, perfect hook. So we'll file board. this down a bit too. Well done. That was quick and easy. You've done this before. I, I can have, tell. Yes. <laughs> we'll reheat and uh, I'm going to file this down right now actually and then we can punch it. Let's get these sharp edges off. You're probably going to wear them down anyways, but... So Mr. O'Connell, obviously I came to the best blacksmith in Barkerville. I think so. But I had multiple options, didn't I? You did, yes. Uh, in the 1860s there were over two dozen blacksmith shops here and over two dozen saloons. Nice. Yeah. And they were all making equipment for the miners of the gold rush here in Barkerville. They were. They looked after the townsfolk as well, but mainly it was mostly mining tools. Mining tools. Yeah. Back in the 1860s, Barkerville was one of the, I think it was the largest city north of San Francisco and west of Chicago. There mm -hmm. were 10,000 people living in this strip of this valley here. 
where places like, you know, Fort Victoria, the, the capital, the now capital of British Columbia, only had about 300 people back then, where this place had 10,000. For the 1860s, this was a huge city and run by people like Mr. O'Connell here. to the spoon end, something similar in curvature? Yeah, um, a bit flatter for the spoon end for sure. Narrow, but still something that can actually, you know, hold on and grab something to lift out of the crack. And do you want the end blunt or coming to a point? Point would be good. Point would be good, yeah. So you're just gonna put the piece right in there and hammer it down with uh, probably yeah, uh, so sort of an inverse of that same shape. There you go. Exactly. Right. And now that the metal's thin, it probably heats up a lot faster. It in there. does. Yeah. And it catches more hot air coming up if you lay it down flat side like this. So you want to put it in this way, not this way. And we put our metal straight into the fire this way. We don't poke it down in. Because it would get hotter in one spot than another if you did it that way. Destroy it, and that's. The deep part of the fire is where the oxygen is being consumed. So you'll also get oxidation and it'll affect the surface of the metal. Is this going to be deep enough? I think so. Um, it's kind of turning backwards though. Can we... F yeah. Just enough of a little scoop there to grab that little nugget and pull it out. That's perfect. So it's fairly thick, so it should be sturdy. Now, are we going to curve the end up as well? I would leave curve it? like about that much of it up to maybe 30 degrees, and yeah. I would say that's probably... But the tip... No, I don't think so. You want the tip left open? Yeah. Okay, let me just curve this a bit here. More or less. Well, I'd say that's perf. A little more, just a tiny more. Perfect. Perfect. So now we're going to just give it a bit more heat and then I'm going to twist it to line up the spoon with the hook. And then we can clean up that end of the file. Then we can do our initials and the date in the middle. Perfect. Yeah, Got to date it. Oh, where, yes. where are we? It's like a 1868 here yes. in Barkerville today. Yes. yes. A fine year. So we're just twisting it back. By hand even. Yeah. You're a brute. Mm. <laughs> and then I'll, this needs to be straightened a little bit. Just going to let it cool a touch. And I'll start cleaning it up with the file. I start pushing on this too hard now, it's going to bend. It's still red right here. Mr. O'Connell, yes. if one of my viewers wants one of your fine creations, is there any way that they can contact you if they don't actually visit Barkerville? Yes, you can go on Barkerville's website. Excellent. You can order things through there. Perfect. You can also send an email if you want something specific. There you go. If you check out Barkerville's website, I'll leave a website address here below. You can order something specific from Mr. O'Connell here in the blacksmith shop. And he's got some amazing items. Our punching of the shop initials and the date, we can just put a nice flat area here. And this will blend into the flat part of the 
hook. All right, here's the C. Here comes our A, or our and, sorry, ampersand, is it? I don't know what that's called. And now the A, and we'll put it in the fire again. Uh, a little shaky here this morning. Too much coffee? Yeah, not enough. There. Okay, we have CNA for Cameron and Ames, the name of the blacksmith shop here, and 1868 for today's date. Our next job is to make sure that this uh, tool stays in good shape and doesn't bend or break on us. So we're heating it up to a very specific temperature here, and then we're going to be quenching it in an oil. And the oil cools it down at a specific rate that actually will harden the metal or temper the metal to a specific degree that makes it tough but not brittle. We have to go. Did I get most of that right Mr. O'Connell? Yes. So we'll be hardening and then we're going to go back and reheat at a lower temperature and temper. Doesn't that smell good? Nice. <laughs> Wontons. Used oil from the Chinese food restaurant here in Barkerville. Now I'm hungry. Yeah. We're going to gently heat it up to about 500 degrees. I'll touch it with a file so we can see the color. And then back in the oil. There we go. The first process is hardening it. Now we're tempering it, but the, pro the sort of combination of the two, hardening and tempering, gives it that perfect you know, degree of toughness without getting it too brittle hard. And I have no idea of the carbon content of this bolt, so. <laughs> Here is a much larger crevicing tool that Mr. O'Connell has made previously. Was this for someone? No, that was just for fun. Just might, for fun. I might sell it eventually. And the other one was made by a blacksmith friend of mine years ago. This oh, smaller this tenor. one down here. Yeah. Almost perfect. Now that we have the perfect shape, it's time to protect the steel, protect the iron from rusting. And the way we do that is we heat it up to a hot temperature, but not as hot as we would for forging it. We heat it up nice and hot, and then we coat the surface in an oil. What happens there is the oil will burn on, because it's hot, will burn onto the surface, and it creates a carbon coating on the surface. And that thin layer of carbon on the surface will resist rust and helps protect the iron in the long term. So we'll touch the bar with a bit of oil just to see just to see if it's hot enough. It's smoking. If it's not smoking, it's not hot enough. We're gonna put this back in now and bake the wet oil until it looks completely dry. And again, we're getting some soot on there from the fresh coal burning. Just like seasoning a frying pan. Get the other side. Now, Mr. O'Connell, if I'm not mistaken, the last job here will be one last quench to cool it off so we can touch it with our fingers. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Just tip it in here. And there we are, a finished crevicing tool. <laughs> well done, Mr. O'Connell. Thank you. There we are, nice size for one hand. It's perfectly done so I can pull, I can grab against the spoon here to pull the nuggets straight from the cracks. And if I loosen one up that's down in the crack, I can go down in with the other end, grab it and pull it out. That is a perfect crevicing tool. And again, if you want your own crevicing tool or anything else, you know, hand forged, check out Barkerville's website and on there you'll find a contact for Mr. O'Connell in the blacksmith shop. He does great work. Thank you, Dan. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed doing it. And I have to say a huge thank you to Mr. O'Connell for inviting me into his shop and making me this amazing tool. If you did like this video, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription already, I hope I earned your subscription today. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of 
Dan Hurd Prospecting. Hope you're all having an amazing day. And until the next one, bye. Have a good day, everyone.